here at the Poker Den, deep in the heart of East London, to some, the spiritual home of poker. And tonight, the setting for a 24-hour cash game, so strong, so forlorn, that it's attracted some of the biggest names in poker. They've stepped through the ropes, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Some have left punch drunk and dazed, others waiting in a queue just to fill those empty seats. an unforgiving arena. Just ask John McGill, which feels more, winning a million dollars at the World Series or being buried alive here? $30,000 stuck in East London. But he ain't given up. 20 hours playing in and he's back for more. They've all been here, but before we dish dirt on who's winning or losing, let's have a look around this table. This British young gun Brolin the Wolf, he's all action and you better believe he ain't gonna leave early. I like the competitiveness and the freedom that playing poker gives me and just the gambling, it's all fun. Baz Ahern has been King Midas since he came into this game enjoying himself immensely. Poker has a habit of stripping you to the bone and exposing your whole character to everybody because of the bad beats or the lucky cards on the river. Kirill Garasimov has been in a hole that he can't see the sight out of. I, I always feel like I'm fucking never worry about the result. John Miguel back for more, a couple hours kip, but could he forget about the money he's down? My timing was completely off, so I'm just trying to get, forget anyone near my money back, I'll be happier. Even half of a bank will feel like a winner, you know? And Phil Curtis. Ain't been going right for Phil. He's fearless. All you can do is get your money in good, and how the cards come out, you know, there's nothing you can do about that, you just have to take it. Tony G, the table captain, itching to play, and always has a word in. I proved my point against Phil Helmuth, he quit the game. Devilfish quit the game. Looking at the leaderboard, it has been Tony G. 22,000 ahead, but look at Roland De Wolf. He had been 30 grand up, and not now he ain't. And uh, McGill rubbing his hands there. You know, remember early on in this game, uh, I think he got stuck nearly 40,000 or something. Early on in this game, if he rubbed his hands, one of them would have fallen off. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he did something that's a real smart move in a cash game. All right, lads. He, he, he won about 15, 20,000 back, where he's only stuck about 20, 25,000 or so, and decided, you know what, let's take a little break. You're absolutely right, Tony. Well, it was the pro thing to do, but... Uh, <laughs> He's a little unfortunate in that. I mean, he probably expected to come back at this stage to, to get into a game full of losers. But, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, uh, but this is the Tony. Three of the guys here are winners, post, and, uh, and the other two are on the comeback trail. I mean, there are yeah, two disappointing trades. First of all, the game he missed may have been one of the best cash games ever seen this side of Western Europe. The second thing is, Roland DeWolf sat down in John McGill's seat and exactly two hands later won about $12,000 with the aces. I wonder, I wonder how long, how many hands it's going to be before Tony G remembers to tell him. <laughs> I wouldn't bet it's going to be any more than three. How stupid is this Irish? Can I raise? Prove yourself. Prove it. Yes. Yeah. 5,000. Raise 5,000. Come on, Irish. Just make a 500. Back on the fast train to Ireland. Race to there is no train to Ireland yet. You're an absolute idiot. idiot. You're not. <laughs> You're just Christ, fair on a reflection. Wipe, he doesn't really look all that fresh, but but, but, but it does have a lot of heart. I've got to salute him that. I must say, I, I've often travelled from England to Ireland, but I, I, I've never done it by train. You got me last deal? night. I wasn't good. Taylor, you deal away there. Go on these here, Marty. I check. You're checking. Are you trapping? Are you trapping? Are you trapping me? Are you tra trap checking? No? <laughs> it's not like you're trapping me. It's a bit too much. Ugh, Danny's your why customer. Not? Why not? 
OK, a thousand. Thousand. Well, he's a chicken. They're not play. <laughs> Told you, it's no good. If there's it's one hard. good thing about John McGill, is that perhaps nice. two, two kings. Perhaps I, 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 I his, uh, crushed, his luck has changed. I'm he's hit a flop for once. And, uh, <laughs> you know, whether or not the game is better or not, <laughs> the game is certainly better for John McGill. He's got a much better Should image right now than he had. Geez. And, uh, yeah, when, you know, at one stage of this game, uh, John McGill was looking like a boxer. Was, uh, you know, when he's heard the bell in the, at the yeah. end of a round, he's walked towards the rock yeah. corner. He was just... Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm quite familiar with the feeling. But, uh, I mean, he's, he's looking a hell of a lot happier, isn't he? You know the other thing, I mean, when I've seen John McGill at his best, it involved a lot of verbal. And uh, after about the first four hours last night, he was, he was dead silent. They took it all away from him. He couldn't really compete with Helmuth, Tony G, and the Devilfish at the table. But... You're an I, this is I, I reckon he's going to be the, the verbal champion, perhaps, right now. Did you double up straight away? Devilfish put it all in with King Queen. Because he's just You know, sometimes in a, in a cash game situation, I mean, I know John McGill is uh, still losing over 20,000, I think. But, uh, you know, he's come from over 30,000 behind, so, you know, he kind of... 40, 40. 40. Well, he's got a little bit of momentum. And he's won the first pot when he's come back in. I mean, conversely, uh, Roland DeWolf, who got into her seat and was as much as 20,000 in front, approximately... Uh, is now winning only five or six thousand, so uh, this John McGill may actually be feeling a lot more comfortable in this situation than Roland the Wolf is. That's the kind of thing you see uh, time and time again, time and time and time again. Did you, did you see the way the Wolf just splashed that pot with the raise? Okay. Are we breaking at that point? Well, he, he, he did everything but dribble. I'm just going to get around to my blind and then I'm off. Because I've got, the boys. Be, I've got to see these boys. I've got to see a thing at a local school. Right, it's only half. You know we've seen several there. images in the last 20 minutes. Ever since Barry Hearn got ahead $10,000 of him looking at his watch. <laughs> As somebody who's played in a few cash games myself, not a lot of, not a lot of watch looking. <laughs> you're not usually looking at the watch because you're early. <laughs> <laughs> That's like his West Ham shit. Yeah, I played yeah, in a cash yeah. game once. <laughs> they went on for uh, a little over 60 hours, and one guy who'd been stuck for about 58 of them and stuck pretty big. Eventually, after 60 hours, he won a pot that put him a little bit in front, and then announced that, that he just remembered he had to go home and feed the dog. <laughs> I mean, it was uncharitably mentioned that perhaps had he lost to get out of jail, then they were quite happy to think that the dog was suffering at least as much as he was. I didn't subscribe to that point of view. Everything you do is special. Watching their youngsters, they're probably... They've got a bit more energy here. Harry Hearns just kind of turned his back on Roland I think in Japan that would be considered quite a slight. I'm not sure exactly how it works in the 80s. Roland <laughs> DeWolf has got a few other concerns <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> any any slight real or imagined. <laughs> Check. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay, I'm not waking up yet. <laughs> Just signed him on a three year deal. Nice. I tell you what, this yeah. is Grasimov a step backwards. I think, I, I think at one point he was down fifteen hundred and sixty-four. He's lost six hundred dollars. He must be absolute. He's just probably tortured. Look at that. He's going to count again. Have I really lost six hundred dollars in the last fifteen minutes? Can you go blind? Can you go two hundred? Are you going to straddle? Owen, will you call me? Are you going to straddle two hundred? No. If this is what you're straddling, where you come from? We were doing it all night. I know, I know, but it's like Roy Rogers does that. East London. Will. Rogers, <laughs> <laughs> Who does he play for? Um, <laughs> I thought I'd done it, Don. You're from Brighton. Brighton. That's where they do the yeah? straddles. No. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not from Brighton. I'm Couldn't from London. I was born in Brighton. There you go. It's a nice place. Tony's from Brighton. Tony Blim. Yeah. yeah. His brother's on the board of Brighton. I think he might Darren. be too. I tell you, I'm <laughs> surprised Tony Blum's not here now that you mention it. <laughs> The piece in Brighton. Well, I'm so happy to know. say. But either way. Well, when Barry goes, the game ends for me, chaps. 
<laughs> it would have been a hell of a character in this game. Oh, God. Oh, God. He could have done the, yeah. he could have done the 24 just hours. Just in. Like some of your money away. Well, we could have had the start about 15 <laughs> hours ago. <laughs> 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 Is it? <laughs> Tony Blue, Tony G's been here for 16 hours. Well, 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 very, what level? It's getting better, Tony, slowly. This could be a very big pot. Tony G and McGill yeah. squaring off. Next time, do like 15 hours with me and we'll see what happens. I think McGill's going to have talk on part. I'm back with... Uh, I'm back. I'm walking Certainly going to give it a spin. Very right? unprofessional. The raise has come from McGill with the 8-10. Or Actually, the raise has probably come from Tony G with the Queen Jack. That's correct, Jesse. Yeah. It's a good possibility. Is, is that you know, you know I don't like a check. I don't do that. Well, I was, was going to kind of say, either way, it's a raised pot. And uh, Baz, I heard it. He's got our, he just kind of stopped. Quick, pick up a quick load. He, he played very well. He came in. He put Roland on tilt. <laughs> he gave manners to Tony G. And he completely yeah, avoided so Kirill Grasimov like the plague. I think it all in all, it was a great performance. I mean, the man just came in. I mean, if he'd sat around for five or six hours to come up with this strategy you'd have to call him a genius. It was a very Check. impulsive Check. decision. Oh. And call. Well, how much was the bet? 400. So how much did he call for? 400. Oh, well. Oh. Yeah, I'll bet blind. Well, Tony G would an open-ended straight, but uh, I, say I was about to say that the, 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 the nine would be a hell of a card for him. But the ace gives uh, John McGill a fighting chance of getting away from his hand. Oh, yes. Raise. Oh, this is a little unfortunate for John McGill on his... Uh, Two more. <coughs> 2,000 more. <laughs> he does have gamble in him, doesn't he? Yeah, he's... You know, the extraordinary thing is, you know, with, with all the bluffing that's been going on here for over the last 24 hours or, um, or whatever it is, um, they got a lot of the, the real courageous moves <laughs> in coming over the top of guys. And the guy's always had a hand. Yeah. Four. And uh, Tony's got the nuts still and just called. And oh, geez, I'm feeling a little bit bad for McGill here. Four. I feel worse than maybe bad. Four thousand. I'll raise it. Raise. 11 more. Boy, McGill's just gotten his feet wet. And, uh. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Coming back in the muck and mire again, part. Hmm. Four no good for you. Sorry? Four no good. Oh, you know, this is very of us are winning at the four now, are we? Hmm? Yeah. So it was a very courageous raise on a turn, but I'm not exactly sure what he was yeah, trying to more. beat. Well, at the moment, just about all he can beat is, uh, is a busted flush draw. That's the... I mean, you have to have a very particular hand... Uh, to, uh, Tony would have to have a very particular hand for the bet to be uh, to worth it. I, I guess Tony would have to have had a king and he would have had to be representing the ace or something. No, it also wouldn't have been beyond the bounds of possibility that, uh, you know, from Tony G's seat, that uh, John, John McGill could actually have the hand that Tony G has. So I think we'll see uh, John ponder on this for a little while and, um, and give it up. What a I mean, there's a couple things that he, that could happen. I mean, obviously, first of all, he could convince himself that Tony's on a stone cold bluff and call. He could convince himself that Tony has a slightly better hand than him and decide that raising to re represent the straight is the best idea, which sounds a little bit foolhardy, but given that there's 27,000 in the pot, you start to get a bit creative. You're not raising <laughs> that. I mean, no, there is 27,000 so. in this pot. Nearly enough to get John even to be fair if he can figure out a way to win it, which may have occurred to him as well. The fact that there's no more cards to come is s slightly. 
It's a good plan, but it's <laughs> slightly <laughs> frustrating to the story. <laughs> the execution is going to be a little tricky. You know, John McGill, I mean, he's, he's, he's had a go here. One of the problems is when you start. Uh, mm. Just um, nice a bit of a timing cool. problem. Yeah. It's amazing how often that has happened in this yeah. game, isn't it? Yeah, and mostly the no John. He made a good lay down. What happened to Ian Fraser? Oh, yeah, yeah. Several times. Times. yeah sure. I thought so. Now, considering it's a game set. where there's been a hell of a lot of bluffing ah, going on. It's been a nice source, night man. for Tony G. And he'll come like he goes, loudly. I feel I played the best I could. I didn't know how it was done. Things could have gone against me. I would have had to show a lot of, you know, a lot of strength, just fine. But when things went for me, I'm a very good winner, so it was pretty easy for me. It's all change as the money men have moved on, albeit temporarily. Barry Hearn taking a break, as is Roland the Wolf. While McGill and Curtis just trying to get even, you can't get them out of their seats. But a new face coming to the table. It's Liz Liu, the queen of poker. I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. Yeah. But I'm fresh. They've been up for 11 hours. <laughs> well, this game, John McGill coming in and getting the hurt quite early. Those two hands, he's stuck 41,000 now. Andy Greekfish sitting back down, but we have a new player in this game. What is that, thousand? Yeah. 15, Liz Lou. Yeah. Little Liz Lou from Kalamazoo. Oh, We've seen her. Uh, <laughs> There's no <laughs> girls in Kalamazoo that look <laughs> like that. I will tell you that, Jesse May. Um, she looks like she's ready for some action. Had a good night's sleep. She's coming in like an assassin. Yeah, and she's an experienced cash game player. I mean, uh, we've seen Liz over in Europe this month, and we know she can play this game. Yeah, she certainly can. And not, you know, tournaments are relatively new to Liz, I believe. I should ask her about that, but I know that she's a longtime cash game player. She takes her jacket off. She's perched up. She's ready to strike. Right, okay. Yeah, I don't fall. I don't think she's going to have a problem getting right into the fray. But uh, this game has such a different yeah, texture from what it did before. I mean, that's the... Right, uh, from this morning, you mean, when... Uh, yeah, with the double fish. <laughs> it's uh, sometimes hours of boredom followed by moments of Nine. sheer terror. Nine. And... Uh, yep. So... Uh, we're going to be looking for those moments of terror amongst them. John McGill may be unflappable, unterrorized after already being stuck just over 40,000 in this venture. I just feel, yeah, that John McGill has got a good attitude right now. But um, Yeah, you know, he's, he's maintained a good balance after, you know, for being stuck that much. And it looks like the cool. players are going to get out there and mix it up right off Check. the bat. King nine for McGill. Queen four for the geek fish. <laughs> he might resent, yeah, the Greek fish. <laughs> oh, Greek fish, I'm sorry. Sorry. I know it's fish. Six, There's five, a lot of fish out there five, tonight. It's, in like, the ocean, a, it's yeah. like an aquarium. Yeah, the, well, the Greek fish is <laughs> he's a lovely guy. He's, uh, you That's know, this is his second back. pop in the game. I think, I think you must have come into the game last night right after he Plus. quit. And uh, I think he won about 10 grand, Kenneth, so... Uh, He's back yeah. in there. Well, look at Liz Lou coming right out, announcing her presence. Five, five, six. She has the ace three. Ace high, she figures is best. She puts a feeler bet out. Nobody, uh, you know, and uh, she represents uh, possibly a five, and uh, the pot not worth fighting for, so everybody, you know, kind of folds away, and she gets off to, you know, starts that momentum train. My big blind is fighting for you. <laughs> I'm not, you know, Ken, I mean, you look at these four here. Who do you think it's likes the game the most, most, and who do you think is thinking, ooh, no, I wish know. I could just well, get so even and win a few thousand so I can so get so out of here. On offer for free. <laughs> 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 like free you, you know, free, uh, we see Liz here, ace, queen, and diamonds. She's going to bring it in for, looks like 250. 
I think McGill's thinking, man, if I could just get stuck, <laughs> oh, get back to being yeah, stuck like like 20,000, so I'll feel so good. <laughs> Because, I mean, it's it is the dynamics of a cash I game, isn't it? Like, that. a oh, couple like people are looking to get out, and a couple people are looking to lock them in. Yeah. What are going on about it? And a couple people. About. <laughs> Apart from what my mouth just looking to try and get back some of what they lost. Yeah. It's about 300 in the Let's see. So Curtis with the pocket threes re-raises. Liz Flack calls. And this is a great flop for two threes. How much you got there left? Um, Anytime it comes with no paint. Five okay. Has, has Liz put 300 in the dark here? Cool. Nothing, nothing wow, I guess so. I, I missed that, Jesse, but she did in a quick call. We're going to be going to the turn. 650 in the pot. <laughs> now, I don't really need an extra interesting what will happen with the turn yeah, card here. <laughs> Nine. Will Liz continue Six. to fire? No. Nope. Now, this is an important point of decision for Curtis. I think it's important for him to... You know, make a decent sized bet here. Try and pick up the pot. And if not, you can take the free card on the river now. I already know what you have already. Oh, you, yeah, I bet you can't name this hand. Now, I by bet checking. You, I can. you may know that you're behind, but I bet you can't name the hand. I bet you I can. Wow, see, this is just, you know, just a big mistake here. Yeah, played this really well, not Let's ask the question. Yeah, he, <laughs> see, he, he knows himself. And that's what's interesting about this game, you, you know. You can make a mistake, and right afterwards you go, oh, ahead, and, uh, I stepped in the cow poop, yeah, you're you know? Right. You're right. The cow pie. Yeah, well he stepped in the cow pie there, and, uh, never been ahead. No, you know, so it come up around his shoes, and, you know, he's left trying to scrape it off with a stick. <laughs> hey, that was $1,000 in there, wasn't there? $2,000 once Liz made the bet. And Liz has uh, <laughs> won the majority of her hands, but still stuck 1150 because of, uh, you know, that one venture she ventured out on on that bluff, right? firing a couple bullets into the air. Right. Well, we haven't... Uh, <coughs> No, the, blind, the, the game is playing pretty big. Uh, you wouldn't be surprised if we see a $10,000 pot <laughs> before too long. Are those kind of pots can happen, can't time. they? Well, they certainly can when you get yes. a hand against a hand. You know, you're not going to get it when you when the cards are being dealt, you know, 6, 8, 8 deuce. Unless, of course, comes 8, 8 deuce. <laughs> When you go outside, you'll find that right heads. But you were, you know, you were along the right line. So to the flop we go. Six, right nine, line, king. Yeah. king nine. Mm -hmm. fish betting without the ball. That's 250. I like that. You know, you just fire an air ball out there when you have absolutely nothing. Try to pick up the <laughs> pot. And if you fail, if you whiff, you know. You're done. Yeah, you're done. You're right. I'm not unbelievable. Just like that. You're right. But, uh, you know, I, I think Liz, uh, because that nine is there, she has the back door straight draw. As well as a pair, heads up, is, you know, is reasonable. She'll probably, I think she's deciding whether to just flat call or raise here. I don't think she's going to throw it away. Hmm. Did you know I'm a top player? Did you watch your plays last night? Did you? I'm guessing. Hmm. Yeah, I was wondering about that myself. Greekfish does have a bit of a reputation among the internet, but I don't think Liz knows anything more about him than the, no. But you know, two fifty for a two hundred pot. But because, Taste. but you know, Liz, yes. when she took that much well, time, I think she, you know, when you start taking that much time, you decide. Uh, oh, you said you were sure both. You're showing too I'm much lying. weakness anyway, so you <laughs> just decided to give up on it. I think he showed. I think he showed his uh, his hand it's there. Welcome back. Action here at the yeah, PartyPoker.net big game. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, mate. Welcome back. The wolf back in his seat. He took a few hours, Kip, and uh, sometimes that's a great idea to do in a, when you're in a cash game. And you know, he had been up about twenty-seven thousand. Kind of lost a little bit back. Decided just to get some fresh air, clear his head, a little nap, and. I think it looks like he's got the fire back in his eyes. 
Yeah, I brought something with <laughs> Well, my maybe hand. some embers. <laughs> you know, uh, oh, he's out this hand. He'll he'll be dealt in, I believe, the next hand. He's in between the blinds. He's in that eight seat. You see the button on the Greek fish there. Greek fish. What 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 uh, what do you think uh, that comes from? <laughs> no, it's a nickname. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I yeah. thought that was his actual last name, Greekfish. <laughs> oh man, his his middle yeah. name is uh, is uh, uh, Grilled uh, Lemon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I thought the Devilfish was his real last name. Also. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, back to the action. Lou with four five of diamonds. Flop King King nine two hearts. Paul Curtis nine ten. This this flop really airmailing everybody. Usually the person in position will pick this up, and it looks like Greekfish is betting four fifty. He does have the position. Me. And is. Not today. Oh, last night. Well, Curtis has got two pairs. Called? Oh yeah yeah. Oh I'm sorry yeah. Curtis it has an airmailed. Curtis he's got kings up kings and nines. Um. But it's two hours more than him. And is that going to? What an action. Okay. Actually, Greekfish has got some outs now. Straight draw. <laughs> How great he does? is this? Yeah. Check. Oh, it comes a five or a ten. Oh, yeah. The, oh, the so Greekfish, yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, no. Yeah, that's true. Check. Well, now, no, even though he has eight high, he could represent a flush draw completed on the river with a nice size bet here. Could possibly win it, but I think he's going to get looked up by Curtis. Curtis is just, you know... Lost too many hands. He's going to be looking for any chance to win a pot. So I think he's, you know, reluctantly going to call. Kind of the bet's only 250. It's um, right. Nine. I don't know exactly what Greekfish could get uh, Curtis off of that small bet. Maybe a straight draw, a 10 jack or something. Along yeah, he those needed things. to make. This is no limit. You know, he needs to bet like, uh, you know, at least the size of the pot. So if you and really commit to try and win that pot if he really wants it. Otherwise, just go ahead and check it. Now, sometimes you can make it look like a value bet. Right. But when you're, when you're check called on a flop like that, you got to figure the guy has, you know, either made his flush himself in a slow plane in it, or he's got two pairs and going to look you up. You don't need the aces if you got the button. You've already got the button going for you. Just to be sure. I like this Phil like Curtis. I've never met him before. I don't know where he comes from, cool. but uh, nobody cool. seems to know. He just kind of like uh, so he's like got a play. smile on his Knocked face. Knocked on the door and said, uh, I hear you guys got a poker game. Yeah, <laughs> Mind if I sit in? like a for And uh, sit in he does. Wham. Coming right in here. No problem. He's got the king six of hearts. A very underrated hand. And yeah, McGill bumping it up with the ace eight, making it 350 <laughs> to go. Yeah, from the big blind, there was a double limp. And uh, he's right. His ace eight cool. is the best right now. You know, you're going to laugh, but I really thought I was making a joke because I really thought Greek fish was really come from the Greek. Right. You know. <laughs> <laughs> then again, I'm just a cowboy. Adam. It's a it's what a nickname. I? I think uh, you, could, you, could. you know it's an online nickname, and I I think oh, is that what it I is? think the Devilfish is one of the Greek fish's heroes be before he first took up the game, and uh, I bet he's really Greek though. Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think so. Really? Think he's got black hair. From Bangladesh, I think. Bangladesh. <laughs> Why wouldn't he be called Bangladesh the, the, fish? The Greek oh, part of Bangladesh. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> he is Greek. He's Greek. Four, seven, eight, three hearts. How about this? <laughs> Phil Curtis has flopped the second nuts. And the redraw, the redraw to the straight flush. And McGill has the nut flush draw. So we're going to see some action here. How about rolling the wolf's hand? What does he have? He's drawn dead. Well, oh, he's got, he's got the straight. He flopped the straight. You know, and this is this is dangerous. This is dangerous territory for a Roland because it's so hard to put somebody on flopping the nuts. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's called the 1200. What's Curtis going to do? Options are open. Curtis isn't that deep, but between McGill and DeWolf, there's they're each at least 20,000 deep. Well, now this is probably going to let uh, DeWolf get off the hand if it's a significant raise. Let's see how much it is. 
yeah. Look at this pot. Oh, Swells to nine, the over $9,000. Well, how should uh, McGill be thinking about this? Well, McGill's going to be looking at the value. He's going to see how much it is to call, how much is in the pot. He knows that his opponent can't have enough flush. He's got to be drawn live, and that's going to tempt him. And plus, he's got to gain ground, remember. He's still stuck probably 35000 so a nice $10,000 pot would go a long way to relieving mm -hmm. some of the headaches he's had tonight. Well, he's, also he's got two cards to come, too. Man, next time I'm charging yeah. for this. So I like to, I, I expect to with call love. him. Make that bet, though, do you? Huh? With love. You could charge uh -huh. me with love. No. I mean, uh, if Roland, despite what Curtis have, uh, Roland will be more interested in what Mc McGill has since right. McGill's about. Well, and McGill, uh, I exactly right, Jesse. And M McGill, conversely, also really interested in DeWolf because he would make this call automatically if he didn't think it was going to cost him more money. You know, oh, cool. but. Cool. He see he's called, no. hoping that the wolf doesn't hasn't flopped the flush and is going to move in behind him. But he's relieved to see that uh, the wolf gets out of the way. Yeah, it's a it's a good fold by Roland. I mean, in a sense, although, you know, if Roland pushes in there, right, I, I just wonder, you know, if he's a favorite over McGill's hand, that there could have been a side pot, couldn't there? Of like, she's like twenty five thousand. I mean, uh, wow, it's complicated, yeah. isn't it? And McGill had the top pair with the. Right. It's just too much out there for, for Roland to put more money in the pot, more than he already did, 1200 So here we go. McGill drawing live, except for the five of hearts. Ten of hearts. Everybody Everybody knows. Knows. I don't want a ten of hearts. We want a nine of hearts. Five of hearts. Five of hearts. Well, I like the five of hearts. a bit unlucky for Curtis if he loses this pot. He's... Um, this, this pot would, wouldn't would be that far from getting him back on the road to easy. Yeah, Curtis really needs this pot. He's got to avoid the heart. And, oh, my goodness. Now he's got an open end straight flush redraw. But he doesn't like it. He needs a five or a ten of hearts. I mean, McGill's just been his bogeyman tonight. Look at McGill. Now, all of a sudden, a slight smile coming over his face. He has been in the cellar. And all of a sudden, he's like running up the steps of the basement. He's turned the nuts. Can he hold? He does. And you can see, I think that might be it for Curtis. He's just very unlucky. Sometimes you know, nice just gentleman. Not, very not nice gentleman. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, a very nice gentleman uh, to come in and come down and play. And he's he's probably leaving a lot like he came in. He lost 20000 and nobody uh, seems to know his name. I've lost two big hands in a row, um, both, you know, on pretty brutal draws uh, against the same person. He's got position on me. I'm just not feeling it. Plus, the stacks are getting so deep. Um, if I was to buy in now, Again, for the minimum, I'm playing, you know, one move poker, uh, any kind of hands, you know, that we hit on the flop, the money's going to go in. And, you know, if I was going to get back in the game, I'd want to get back in, you know, with a big stack and, and really have a go. But probably not a good idea because I'm getting a little, a little tired now. And uh, who's, who's to say how long the game's going to go anyway? You, you can see Mad Marty Wilson in the Pass. background. He looks like he's been keel hauled tonight. <laughs> you know, the devil fish went after him Reeves. pretty hard. And look at McGill. He's got the ladies, pocket queens. And the button. DeWolf taking the flop with king 10. They're ready to mix it up. He says, hmm, he looks over at the stack of green. The race is 350. There's 0750 in the pot. Not big enough for McGill. He's going to want to add a few more chips. Will he do it here? I think this would be a great check by McGill just to show some weakness and induce a bluff from the werewolf on the turn. He's not going to give him a free card. He's going to charge him $700. Wow, rolling and looking to... Wow, Roland making a long call here. I don't know what he's hoping to catch. His opponent's raised. If he catches a king, he's not going to feel good about it. So don't 10 is an undercard to the jack. This is a really long call by the werewolf. Oh, perfect card for him, though. Gives him the open end straight. 
McGill with three queens feeling like all of a sudden the weight has been lifted and he has been delivered. His opponent is betting into him. He's got three queens. After 40,000 loser, his opponents are betting into him and he's got trips. He's got to feel like, you know, something, you know, the black cloud has passed over. Well, I mean, how should McGill weigh up the choice of whether to call a raise here? He's got to put some heat on this pot because there's flush draws out there and the straight draw, of course, which is kind of hidden. But, yeah, if he puts some heat on this pot, he should uh, get, raise. you know, raise. the pot's going to develop to, it's going to, might entice uh, the werewolf to yeah. call. 2,000 more. 2,000, that's just enough. Big splash of red. Yep. Cool. Now we're looking at uh, like a $7,000 pot. Will his luck continue? Will his momentum continue, rather? Absolutely it does. It's a, well, it's a great river for him. And let's look at this. Roland DeWolf, as if he's still asleep, doesn't want to give up this pot. That's 3200 Half the size of the pot. And look at Miguel. Now the acting goes to work. The lip... The sigh, the look of disgust. I mean, poor <laughs> Roland. I, I, I don't know if he had, you know, he's either got the wolf in a different place or he's just taking a stab at it because it's big. Uh, can, what kind of hand do you think he's hoping McGill has here? Same well, he's, kind hoping, of hand. he's hoping that he had <laughs> a busted yeah, flush draw, you know, or a pair of fives or an under pair and that he could buy this pot with a nice size bet. But... Um, you know, he was doomed when he called this flop with King-10, I think. And the hammer's going to go down. But, you know, in DeWolf's credit, maybe he was he was he he called the flop to try and represent the flush when, if a spade, you know, had come. Mm. And it just went awry for him when he picked up the straight draw. Yeah, early on... Um, oh, yes. Right. In this cash game, McGill made a raise on the river with absolutely nothing. I don't even think Roland was in the game at that point. But um, I guess he's kind of praying that, that Roland thinks he's on the air ball. Has, has McGill stuck a raise in yet? No. No, he has. He announced. Right How much? 10,000 more. 10,000. Boy, that is a hefty raise. That's like a pot size raise. raise. Yeah, that's what that's what he's trying to do. Yeah, so Roland, confusion, yeah. isn't he? No, Roland's just trying to save face that. here. He obviously can't call mm -hmm. anything. So he's just mm -hmm. trying to save face. And I mean, there's a lot of money in there now. You can see Roland uh, still squinting. Probably needs that cup of orange juice yet. Queen. Queen. Queen's Fall, he called it. Maybe he is awake. Queen's Fall, very good. Nice call, Roland. To the muck we go. If I miss, why would you raise? Doesn't make sense, does it? No. Nope. Uh, Roland's pretty clever. I mean, he, he's... I, I missed. So I know. I saw him do this in the whole Premier League. He... He's a creative guy, Kevin. Yeah, really is. He's a deep thinker. He's thinking, you know, well, if you know that I was on a draw and missed, why would you why would you raise me? Why wouldn't you just, you know, call me down? Well, because his hand is too big, Roland. You called it. Queen's wow. full. So Roland's thinking, wow, what if this guy, what if my king high is good now? This is the thoughts that go through your mind after you've been playing, you know, for 10 or 12 hours and have had very little sleep. That's funny. Is my king high good? Could the guy, what can I beat? Seven, eight of spades. You know, six, seven of spades. And, oh, wow. It looked like he was he was going to call that. I mean, the thing, the thing kind of, he uh, started to fall. Right, <laughs> you, you know, the nuts oh, and the uh, total air bluff sometimes are played the same by people, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what, I think that's what Roland's saying. If you don't say that, I call you. Yeah, add kings. Yes. Believe it or not, I have to say something. Dead king. Well, he had a king. <laughs> you know, you got to maintain your image in the game. Wow. And so, wow. Uh, at least till the next break, he'll do that.
Welcome back to the Party Poker Big Game. And how about that? What a number for Miguel. Minus 17,000 oh. only. Yeah. And, uh, you know, DeWolf, who was up 27,000 at one point in this game, can, uh, right. or so, DeWolf will feel like he's lost about 25,000 straight, even though he's winner in this game. Yeah, he's, he's going to be left in shock, and McGill's going to feel like winner <laughs> with 17,000 in losses. I think it's a he, funny, funny game. Huh? I'll okay, sure you're right. Yeah. He raised a turn. He comes out betting the river. He's, He's got all invested in the pot. I just put it down. Yeah, Liz, but still, Liz what Liz else Lou hasn't have been involved in a pot yeah. in a while, but don't think she well, hasn't been watching. No, he can't Unless, raise 10,000. Yeah, she's nothing. trying to well, figure out exactly. Gotta have something. If he thinks he's missed, then he's missed all sides. He's going to re-raise But if he thinks Roland missed, he's not going to come out and say, oh, I think he missed. Well, that's not the switch play, isn't it? Why not? Why not? I don't think it would. I don't think it would. Why you say something that's makes any sense? Roland, I tell you what, Roland wants a break right now so he can just find out exactly what Miguel had. I don't blame him, actually. No way. You know, those kind of things eat you. I mean, you want to know what the guy had in the $19,000 well, pot. I think he might, he might have showed him. I'm not oh, sure. did he show him? Yeah, he oh. might have. And, uh, well, was tough they're to still talking about it. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess you're right, Yeah, because he didn't because they're still Tim questioning him. I'm a bit crazy now. A lot of kings out there in this oh. last uh, Jack hour or two. Raise, raise queen? No, I don't think so. You know, on the flopper in the hands, nobody having he anything. Bet the queen? A lot of kings, a lot of kings. Maybe and the jack. You bet on the queen, come. You and Liz, the gonna go straight <coughs> to Broadway. They say the. Anyway, it was, it was uh, strange. 350. Now, but 350. My best By TV. Liz Lou. The Greek fish studying, trying to figure out uh, if there's a way to win this pot. I guess when Liz uh, called before the flop, he decided that he was beat. I mean, it'd be weird to make a play now, wouldn't it? Did he check the flop? Pass. Pass. <coughs> Liz looking very pretty this morning. I'm Liz Liu. Um, I've been playing poker for 12 years. No, I'm sorry, 13 years now. Uh, from LA and and Vegas as well. That's the only thing that I've ever been interested in doing is poker. Like a lot of my friends used to get me, try to get me to invest in real estate and stock market. It goes in one ear and comes out the other. It's like I'm not interested. But when anything that comes to cards, okay. When I first started, there was rarely any women. Though uh, I can just say there's probably about 10. Now there's probably about 1,000. Some of the women have really, really proved to all the, other, the rest of the women of the world that women can play just as well. And I, I can say I, I can play just as well as all the other guys. Um, it's just a matter of determination and, um, you know, your skill, the more you sit at the table and play, the more you observe, the more you're going to pick up toes. And when you first sit down at a game, you can sense whether, you know, you're running bad, you're running good, and if there's going to be a turnaround. Like a lot of times, for instance, I'll give you an example. I was in one of the best games with probably, you know, six live players. The pots were humongous. I just couldn't catch. I have ace, king of hearts, it comes up three small black cards. And those are the kind of days where you know that's not your day. The more you sit, the more you're gonna lose. So I took the 20,000 loss and, and left. Went home, got a good night's sleep, came back and won it back. So <laughs> the game will always be there. That's what I've learned. I've played for so long, everybody knows me, especially in Vegas and in California. When I sit down, they're like, oh God, the beast is here. That's what they say. It goes on and on and on this party poker.net big game. <coughs> right. Race to 375. Greek fish, 375 ball. Call. Good call. Nice. Yeah. And uh, the wolf, you know, he only he bought into this game for 10,000. Can I mean his third hand, he more than doubled up. Yeah, uh, I hope there. Two uh, rockets. And uh, this is basically the lowest he's been since then. It's 
Jeez, it's I don't know. It's something like twenty hours ago. It's a long time ago. Yeah, he's gonna. Well, he's gonna feel like you know he's worked all this time for nothing, and you know he's 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 quite upset. But he's not gonna be upset with this flop. Look at this. Well, this is okay. Three's full. Oh my goodness! A dream flop. If you know you're just hoping your opponent has something, he's gonna flat call her six hundred. What tournament are you playing next? I can't imagine Roland's gonna raise this yet. He's got Rose. position. He, to he does. All in and a call. Really? <coughs> Fast play oh, trap the great fish. Yeah. <coughs> the fast play trap the Greek fish. And uh coming in at four Oh my wow. An incredible. He's nearly drawn dead here, Andy. Uh, yeah, he's going to need running jack to run against this. He made a very impulsive move, Ken. He, 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 he just assumed, I think, Kenna, that. Um, Roland was out there mixing it up with nothing. 300 euros. 600. Yeah, it's a. Uh, if he hadn't taken that, it would be the number. 3,300 euros. And uh, this is a big pot. Greekfish was on top of yeah. more than the wolf. He's doubled Roland up here. Wow. Well, you know, he has been winning all night, and all of a sudden, you know, that's the that is the beauty, and also the you know the pain of uh, no limit hold'em is you can take these swings after being up all night. All of a sudden, you know, fortunes are going to change here, and this you know just by one misstep. I've had uh, two 20,000 pots in less than five yeah. hands. That'll be it. Roland the Wolf will collect. And, uh, I mean, I'm guessing both these pots are in the top, you know, six or seven size pots mm -hmm. of the night. Uh, um, probably the big 101 next. It was, uh, and that hurts, you know, Andy. Right, yeah. Okay. He's saying, geez, I had won my six, 7,000. I had my so scratch. He took a break, he took a nap, Hello, got a full know. night's sleep, and he's, he's come back and been, a, I guess, a bit cold decked, but maybe just the game has just changed a little bit as well. Well, it's definitely a changed game. You're talking about four-handed now. Yeah, he's, it's you a know. tough lineup here. I mean, uh, it's a tough lineup. Yeah. You know, all these guys, well, they'll look like tough players to me anyway. Yeah. Well, certainly the most experienced, Roland and uh, Liz. No. Some flops in this game. And uh, now you can see the Greek fish, who was 10,000 up at yeah. one point, right over 10,000 now, dips down to 7,000 loser. Oh, that's going to leave a, leave a bitter taste, kind of like a coffee with no sugar. Right? Yeah. Kind of like. It's amazing. Uh, Roland just dumped off all those chips and uh, got a bunch back. He's been... Uh, <laughs> He's been 27,000 up. Then he went uh, dead even. And uh, within three hands, he's won 12 grand again. So, Ken, uh, it all, I mean, he's never going to get that money unless he raises on the flop. It was, uh, it was so deceiving, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess, I guess you know, Roland, uh, you got to give action to get action. And, uh, Cool. He certainly did that. Pass. Pass. So uh, here we go. The Greek fish now in there with the 10 7. And the wolf, ace 5, the flop, jack, jack, 8. Jack. 200. Two clubs. Pass. Wow, that's not gonna that's not gonna make him feel uh, much better there. Collects four hundred and fifty dollars. Fabian's coming back in a minute. What? Fabian's coming. You can see he's uh, Greek fish. Five minutes now for an hour and a half. Just a, you know, a little disappointed with that misstep. Uh, I'm gonna try and recover. Leaderboard showing you can look under the seat cushions for the loose change because there's no money on the table. They're all losers here, except for DeWolf, who with a $12,000 lead has plenty of cash and flash. McGill, well, he must actually feel like a winner. My God, it's been $20,000 since he's been $20,000. We're moving into the end game right now. Dare I say it's daylight outside? Only a few hours left to turn that loss into profit. 
crunch time for John McGill, backwards time for Andy Greekfish, and Baz Ahern waiting to sit down again. Join us next time for the final act of the PartyPoker.net Big Game.